Hello and welcome to Books of Blood. My name is John and it seems like it has been a while since I've made a video and it, in my mind it seems like it has been but I think it's only probably been a week, maybe a week and a half. Uh, one thing I want to say before I start this, uh, the main part of this video is I want to say thank you to the uh, people who commented uh, about my post that I posted in the community. Uh, I just basically said that I've been having a little bit of trouble with depression. I don't really know if it was depression or it was just a situation where I felt completely overwhelmed. I think I've told you guys that um, my wife and I had been through or going through the process of uh, getting our house refinanced and what this would have meant and the people we work with what it would mean is that we would get our house refinanced and it'd be a lower mortgage payment and it would also pay off pretty much all of our credit card bills so for the first time in a long 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 time we would not be in debt all right but the process for this is tiring it is tedious and it just overwhelmed me to the point of where I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to function. I didn't even want to get up and go to get, go to work or whatever, but I did, all right? Uh, but long story short, it was successful. We did get this done. And uh, like I said, for the first time in a long, long time, my wife and I are not in debt. We don't have people calling us all the time. Oh, you're going to make this payment or that payment. We don't have this happening. And I think a lot of the reason I felt overwhelmed, not only because of this whole tedious affair, but because it's been so long since there has been good news with this, I didn't know how to handle it. Okay? That sounds strange, but that's exactly what happened. But now that I'm starting to see, I see, get these little emails saying, hey, your payment to so-and-so is posted, your payment to this person is posted, and then I look and it says, you have no balance. My wife has had a student loan balance for years because of these money-grubbing shit weasels that they are, all right, just can't give you a break, all right? Anyway, long story short, I am better, and I really appreciate you guys showing me the support that you did and it's really awesome thank you so much all right so let's get down to the brass tacks this is what this is the beginning of a of i hope a new series that i am going to call horror across america and what i want to do with each one of these videos is i want to take a horror novel or novels hopefully novels set in a particular state. So I'm going to just go alphabetical order. So today we're going to be talking about horror novels that are set in the state of Alabama. And I'm going to tell you something. This is not easy. For this particular one, I feel like I cheated you guys because for this particular one, I've got four books by the same author, two by another author, and then one by an author I've never heard of. You know, and I don't even have a photo for the thing because all I could find was those little thumbnail things and I don't want to stretch that because it looks horrible. All right, so I apologize for that. Anyway, Alabama. You know, and, and the thing is also looking up these books, or look, try, I, I'm sitting there going, horror, okay, uh, see, how did I do this? Uh, horror books set in Alabama. And I would get all these other books and it'd be like, okay, where is this book set? Oh, it's set in Florida. I'm looking for Alabama. You know, oh, it's set in uh, Colorado. I'm looking for Alabama, okay? You know, the place where you're, you, oh, Susanna lives and there's a banjo on your knee and all that kind of shit, all right? I'm looking for Alabama, all right? So, that being said, um, I have read all but two of these books, 
and the ones that I did read I loved so yes I'm going to recommend them so the first four that we've got coming up here are by Michael McDowell okay uh, so the first one I'm going to talk about, and I have not read this one. This was his debut novel. I've not read it. I actually ordered it when I started doing this, so it should be in the mail soon. But we're going to talk first about The Amulet. All right? When a rifle range accident leaves Dean Howell disfigured and, a, and in a vegetative state, his wife Sarah finds her dreary life in Pinecone, Alabama made even worse. After long and tedious days on the assembly line, she returns home to care for her corpse-like husband while enduring her loathsome and hateful mother-in-law, Joe. Joe blames the entire town for her, town's, her son's mishap, and when she gives a strange piece of jewelry to the man she believes most responsible, a series of gruesome deaths is set in motion. Sarah believes the amulet has something to do with the rising body count, but no one will believe her. As the inexplicable murders continue, Sarah and her friend Becca Blair have no choice but to track down the amulet themselves before it's too late. And that is the amulet, and that is by Michael McDowell. All right. Next up, we have got Blackwater. I've talked about Blackwater on this book or on this channel a lot of times. I'm not going to go into the whole thing. It is set in Perdido, Alabama. It is the pretty much the lifelong history of the Caskey family and of one Eleanor Dammert Nee Caskey. I believe that's how you do it. The maiden name and then the the, the married name. I believe that's how it goes. I don't remember. Uh, but yes. Um, it is about this family, uh, and this is an Alabama family. That's uh, uh, let me see here. I'll go, I'll go ahead and read it. Um, Blackwater is the saga of a small town, Perdido, Alabama, and Eleanor Dammert, the stranger who arrives there under mysterious circumstances on Easter Sunday of 1919. On the surface, Eleanor is gracious, charming, anxious to belong in Perdido, and eager to marry Oscar Kasky, the eldest son of Perdido's first family. But her beautiful exterior hides a shocking secret. Beneath the waters of the Perdido River, she turns into something terrifying, a creature whispered about in stories that have chilled the residents of Perdido for generations. Some of those who observe her rituals in the river will never be seen again. And that is Blackwater. Now, this was originally published in a six-part uh, serial uh, uh, volume, like The Green Mile was. All right, I don't remember if this came before The Green Mile. I think it did. So Stephen King may have gotten a little bit of his idea for that from uh, Michael McDowell's uh, Blackwater, and he is a huge fan of Michael McDowell, all right, so it's a very big chance. Uh, and I read this originally in the serial form. I used to have all the novels. I wish I had them again, but I do have a big, huge volume of this book. I love this book. I love this story. I'll probably read it again sometime in the future, hopefully. But yes, that is Blackwater. All right, so let's go ahead and move on, all right? All right, so next up, we have got Cold Moon Over Babylon, and this also by Michael McDowell. Michael McDowell, Micah, Michael McDowell. Welcome to Babylon, a typical sleepy Alabama small town where years earlier the Larkin family suffered a terrible tragedy. Now they are about to endure another. 14-year-old Margaret Larkin will be robbed of her innocence and her life by a killer who is beyond the reach of the law. But something strange is happening in Babylon. Traffic lights flash in eerie blue. A ghostly hand slithers from the drain of a kitchen sink. Graves erupt from the local cemetery in an implacable march of terror. And beneath the murky surface of the river, a shifting almost human shape slowly takes form. Night after night it will pursue the murderer. And when the full moon rises over Babylon, it will seek a terrible vengeance. Another absolutely excellent book by Michael McDowell. All right, loved it. So there you go. And finally, by Michael McDowell, we have got The Elementals. All right. Um, 
After a bizarre and disturbing incident at the funeral of matriarch Marion Savage, the McRae and Savage families look forward to a restful and relaxing summer at Beldame on Alabama's Gulf Coast, where three Victorian houses loom over the shimmering beach. Two of the houses are habitable, while the third is slowly and mysteriously being buried beneath an enormous dune of blindingly white sand. But, through lo but though long uninhabited, the third house is not empty. Inside, something deadly lies in wait, something that has terrified Dauphine Savage and Luca McRae since they were boys and which still haunts their nightmares, something horrific that may be responsible for several terrible and unexplained deaths years earlier and is now ready to kill again. And that is The Elementals by Michael McDowell. Okay? All right, let's move on through our tour of Alabama. Da -da -ding, ding, da -da -ding, ding. Anyway, all right. Um, so next up, we have two books by Robert R. McCammon. Uh, I think other books of McCammon's, <clears throat> excuse me, are set in Alabama, but I do know that these two particular ones are for sure set in Alabama. All right. So the first one we're going to talk about, uh, <coughs> excuse me been talking too much, uh, is uh, Boy's Life by Robert R. McCammon. Uh, I, I think, arguably speaking, this is probably Robert McCammon. If people were to pick a favorite book of theirs by McCammon, they would probably pick Boy's Life. Uh, this is a coming of age. It is horror. It is mystery. It's all those things wrapped into one, and it's such a damn good book, all right? Zephyr, Alabama is an idyllic hometown for 11-year-old Cody Mackinson, a place where monsters swim the river deep and friends are forever. Then, one cold spring morning, Corey and his father witness a car plunge into a lake and a desperate rescue attempt brings his father face to face with the terrible, haunting vision of death. As Corey struggles to understand his father's pain, his eyes are slowly opened to the folk forces of good and evil that surround him. From an ancient mystic who can hear the dead and bewitch the living, to a violent clan of moonshiners, Corey must confront the secrets that hide in the shadows of his hometown, for his father's sanity and his own life hang in the balance. That is Boy's Life by Robert R. McCammon. And next up we have Mystery Walk by Robert R. McCammon. Born and raised in rural Alabama, Billy Creekmore was destined to be a psychic. His mother, a Choctaw Indian, schooled in her tribe's ancient mysticism, understands a permeable barrier between life and death and can cross it. She taught the power to Billy and now he helps the dead rest in peace. Wayne Falconer, son of one of the most fervent tent evangelists in the South, travels the country serving his father's healing ministry. Using his unique powers to cure the flock, little Wayne is on his way to becoming one of the popular and successful miracle workers in the country. He helps the living survive. Billy and Wayne share more than a gift. They share a dream and a common enemy. They are on separate journeys, mystery walks that will both that will lead them toward a crossword road where the evil of their dreams has taken shape. One of them will reject the dark, the other will be consumed by it. But neither imagined just how monstrous and far reaching the dark was, or that mankind's fate would rest in their hands during an epic showdown of good versus evil. And I've actually got a paperback copy of Mystery Walk over here in my on my bookshelf. Excuse me. Uh, I've also got Black. I got Blackheart. I'm just showing the uh, photos that I found online. It just it's easier for me to do. And all right. Okay. So last but not least, like I said, I do not have an image of the cover for this book. I'm sorry for that. The only ones I could find were those were like 324 by 400 pixels, and that's going to be like that. And if I stretch it, it's going to be all blurry. I don't want to put up put that up. But anyway, the next one I'm going to talk about, and finally, is the Year of the Storm, and this is by John Mantooth. Uh, this is an author I've never heard of. This is a book that I've never heard of. Uh, if any of you have read it, let me know. Is it any good? But, you know, it's an Alabama book. Okay. 
When Danny was 14, his mother and sister disappeared during a violent storm. The police were baffled. There were no clues, and most people figured they were dead. Only Danny still holds out hope that they'll return. Months later, a disheveled vet, Vietnam vet named Walter Pike shows up at Danny's front door, claiming to know their whereabouts. The story he tells is so incredible that Danny knows he shouldn't believe him. Others warn him about Walter Pike's dark past, his shameful flight from town years ago, and the suspicious timing of his return. But he's Danny's last hope, and Danny needs to believe. And that is The Year of the Storm, and that is by John Mantooth. All right. So, this is the first video in what I hope will be a pretty nice little series that I'm going to try to do called Horror Across America, which means I'm going to be covering every all 50 states. So the next one up is going to be Alaska. I do have one book picked out for Alaska already. Hopefully I'm going to be able to find more. All right. Uh, what I also may do, if I can't find a particular book, uh, or a book that is set in a particular state, I may try to find an author who is from that state and talk about some of their books, even though they may not be based in that particular state. But I really hope to find ones that are based in the state that I'm going to be, whatever state I'm going to be talking about. All right. So that's going to do it for now. Again, thank you, everybody. And take, take care and stay scared. Bye-bye.